Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that as we come here together, uh, we are part of you because we are part of Christ. And your promise is that as we abide in him, uh, so we abide in you. So, Lord, we pray today that as we do so, as we hear these words, that you will help us to continue to grow in you, grow in you, grow in our love, grow in our life, and grow in our service of you, Jesus. I pray this in your name. Amen. Well, today's been a pretty great day, wouldn't you say? Seeing Kieran confirm his own baptism, making the promises for himself that his parents made though all those years ago. All those years. It sounds like he's like 40, 40 or 50 or 60, doesn't it? Sorry. Uh, those years ago, <laughs> um, for himself today, and to do it formally in the fellowship of our congregation this morning. It's been wonderful. And look forward to that happening more and more around here. Since before the days Jesus walked the earth, people have been baptised in water. For us today, it's such a meaningful substance. And I think here in Australia, we particularly know the value of water. But the Bible talks about it too. Rivers of life, waters of death, washing clean. And again this morning, I mark Kieran with the cross in water to remind him of his baptism. I'm sure that for Kevin and Shah, they have been reminded of the day when they first brought Kieran to be baptised. Some of you would be aware that Ali and I have recently been away on a holiday. Holidays are, have a great way of reminding us of previous holidays and adventures, the way you value add to your trip, in, in a sense. So this time, uh, we spent a lot of time being immersed in a pool, which is just great. So, and, uh, and it made me think back to a time when I was in South Africa for a conference, and at the end of the trip, I had a chance to go canyoning. I was a little bit fitter and more able back then. And uh, so canyoning, canyoneering, they call it there. And essentially, you follow a watercourse down a mountain, and uh, it becomes... At some points, it's like a, a nice walk. Sometimes it's more like a water slide. Uh, sometimes it can be a big jump into the pool below. I remember looking at one jump a long way down and almost being paralysed with fear because you had to, not, had to make a, a run up and then jump and couldn't actually see the water before you jumped. So uh, it was about 15, 15 metres down, I think it was. So... You don't want to get that wrong. <laughs> anyway, I, eventually I did jump. I landed in the water and it, after all that fear, it felt like the water was just all around and I felt very safe, very supported. It was lovely. But just like the pool at our, uh, our last holiday, eventually I had to get out again. I had to get out, dry off, and get on with the rest of it. Well, today we had the confirmation of here, and, and as I said before, it involved water. But for him, we pray that his baptism is a pool that he never, ever gets out of. Not a physical wet pool, but a pool of living water that only comes from Jesus. Indeed, I hope for all of us today, we're reminded of our own baptism. The day that we were immersed in the waters of baptism. And like here, and we pray that we will live our lives the same way, that we never ever come out of the living waters of Christ. But just like a pool, you can get out again. You can live your life like any other person, like it never ever happened, looking after others, you can do all the right things, you can even come to church regularly, or maybe not so regularly, but you can still find yourself out of that pool of water, pool of living water. But this reading this morning, actually won't let us settle for that. Our lives aren't just supposed to be uh, places from which we go to visit Jesus. What we are all committing to today is to help Kieran grow in his faith, just as he does the same for us. And for our new members, we also commit to them and they to us that we will all continue to encourage one another to ensure that whatever we do, wherever we find ourselves, 
will all continue to grow. They'll, they'll continue to grow in their faith just as we will. And that will be the context for all of our lives. In step with God. Listening and being shaped by the Holy Spirit. It's not a Sunday morning commitment, as I said at the beginning of the service. It's a foundation for life and growth and something we pray will serve them and us for all eternity. But for no, as we think about all these things that these four people have done today, what five people, uh, what is that going to look like? Well, as we look at that passage this morning, we get a couple of clues. So the first one is to stay in the vine. As part of the vine with Christ, it's so important that we not neglect our own spiritual health. You know, if we have something wrong with us, generally we go to the doctor, unless you're a bloke. Maybe, maybe later you go to the doctor. But what about our relationship with God? How does our relationship with him order our priorities? What does being connected to the vine, a part of Jesus' kingdom and family, make you day by day? Some years ago, Ali and I went on probably the biggest holiday we'd ever taken to date. It involved a cruise into the Mediterranean, across the, around the Mediterranean. And some of our time, we were in Turkey. Very interesting place. Not sure I go back there now with a reverend in front of my name, but there you go. There are so many things to see there and experience, but one of those... Something that surprised me was the craftsmanship of the tiles. Now, we tend to make tiles last for maybe 10, 15, maybe 20, 25 years, 50 years at max. But in and around those ancient buildings in Turkey, there were tiles that would have been centuries old. It's just, just phenomenal because of the methods and the qualities of the materials. Even now, a good tile would last a long time if made properly. But there are also some pretty cheap tiles. They look pretty and would be useful, but you feel and see that they probably would have a much shorter life. They're a little more fragile, a little more breakable. You could see the difference between the tiles because they were made with superior, superior materials. They looked far more substantial. You can't expect the same materials to do the same job. Too often we ignore the ways to ensure that we are fully connected to Christ. A part of the vine. Firstly, we are one of the key inputs that God uses one another in growing each other up in Christ. And as we grow in our relationship with God through reading the Bible, through serving, through sharing the gospel, through prayer, we'll only get better at it. Not just in our words, but our actions as well. One of my keenest memories of my dad in my teenage years was when I would go into my parents' bedroom just before they were about to go to bed. And uh, as they're getting ready there, there will be dad kneeling by the side of the bed with his Bible and his Bible reading notes in front of him, reading away. That, as much as any family devotion, taught me the value of spending time with God and in God's word. For years, people have talked about their personal devotions, their private quiet times. But here's the thing, personal devotions, private quiet times, were never meant to remain personal. They were never meant to remain private. Let's share what we learn. Let's share how we see God at work with one another and see how that helps us all to grow. That's the first one. The second one is helping them to grow. A few years ago, I was preparing a family for baptism of their kids. And as we met one night, the mother of the children mentioned that it was an interesting exercise for her. She, something she was unfamiliar with. She was uh, to actually to envisage what it would mean to, to grow up in a Christian home. That wasn't her experience. And as we think about it, it's pretty rare for children to have that experience in our country anymore. But what difference could that make? How could they make that count? And the short answer is by feeding them. Not just with milk, not just with food, 
but by ensuring that they are in great soil as they grow. Sometimes that will be by looking at God's word. Sometimes it will be through developing their character and understanding, through modelling and instruction. But even more, it will, be, it will be vital that they are nurtured in faith through their connection with not just us, but with other Christians as well. For me, one of the greatest things growing up was being part of a beach mission team. I was there as, a, as an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old, annoying, pain in the neck probably. But we were, we were in teams with you know, lots of, lots of uh, young people, number of teens, number of young adults, all on mission together. It was a community for a week or so at a time. There was so much to be gained just by living in community with those other people, seeing their passion, having the time to make friends with them. My parents made that happen at no small cost to them. That was the only holiday my dad, my dad would take every year. But it made a profound difference to me as I learned how to grow in, a, in my love for God. It's something that, um, that we need to continue to offer to others as well. It's easy to go, go, here, uh, go from here and think, well, those are my friends at church. I won't come back and see, I don't need to see them again until next week. But, and we're actually reasonably good at this, at this at this congregation, if we do take the time to catch up with one another, to actually share life together, then we start to see that take root in our community too. Third thing, encourage them to bear fruit. Jesus is really clear about this in, in that passage. Vines are not just supposed to sit there and make awesome leaves. They're not there to make sure they don't die or even just to stay connected to the rest of the vine. Though those things are all important. All those are great for the vine's well-being. But the key thing that they are supposed to do and must do is bear fruit. They're supposed to be in the business of doing what, they, uh, what the rest of the vine is supposed to do. Make as much, uh, as much fruit and good fruit as it possibly can. For Kieran and indeed for all of us, if, we do, if all we do is to get to the end of our lives and still believe in Jesus, still believe that he has eternal life in store for us, that's great. But it isn't why we are to be connected to the vine. We're to be, we have to bear fruit. And that's not just about seeing lots of people become Christians, although we pray that will be the case. It's about them becoming people whose faith is impacting others. It is all about all those fruits of the Spirit. You know, kindness, patience, being concerned for others, so many others. And above all, all of those, love. The love of Christ, with which you love them and they will love others. If the vine grows, it's because the, branch, the branches are producing that fruit in themselves connected to Jesus. So staying connected to the vine, helping them to grow on the vine, encouraging those branches, that is to bear fruit. We have another name for that, discipleship. And we are all to be growing as disciples and making disciples as best we can. Matthew 8, 28, 18 to 20 reminds us, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And it comes with a promise. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We're connected to the vine. May that continue to grow for Kieran today and for all those, for all of us and all those in our households too. And may... We, may we feel that in our hearts and see it in action. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that uh, you have sent us Jesus. We thank you that in him we see you. We see the way in which you would want us to live in relationship with you as your children, as your heirs, as sons and daughters of the living God. Lord, we pray that through, uh, through knowing him, through loving him, through all that he has done for us, may we continue to grow. 
May we continue to know that uh, know ourselves as being part of you. And through that, Lord, may we continue to bear fruit in our lives and in those around us. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's only one reason, one reason.